Look. Twins. Yeah, I know. Weird. It's a weird way to start off your morning as well. Okay. Um, this is kind of an expansion on the lecture uh, that we had before. Just kind of a, the one before was just an overview of careers in forensic science. This one goes into some of the ones that we're going to be looking at throughout the year in a little bit more detail. And so I'll just tell you I made this PowerPoint um, after school one evening and it took me a long time and the pictures that I chose for it just got progressively weirder and weirder as we went along so I apologize in advance okay uh, so the first thing to look at is crime scene investigator this is what we typically think of when we think of forensic science we think of a an actual CSI although the TV show is a horrible representation of what a crime scene investigator actually does um, there actually are a there's a wide variety of jobs that you do as a CSI, lots of specializations, uh, even including some of the ones that we're going to look at today are actually specializations of a CSI. Um, the main thing that they do is they secure and they analyze crime scenes. Um, they're the ones that collect and process evidence. Um, now, if you're wanting to be a CSI, make sure that you don't mind being woken up in the middle of the night because there's not exactly a day clock, you know, where criminals like clock in 8 to 5 or something. Uh, and so you might be woken up in the middle of the night, um, and a crime scene can happen anywhere. So expect to have really um, inconsistent working conditions. Next one to look at is a forensic photographer. Okay, um, now this one probably makes is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the main thing a forensic photographer does is they document the crime scene, but there is another aspect of it because um, some forensic evidence cannot be seen except unless it's under special light, like infrared or, or ultraviolet light. And so a photographer needs to have a working knowledge of using that type of light. Um, also, they are available for courtroom presentations. Um, degree isn't always necessary, but most of the time it is. Generally, you need a degree in photography. Photography. Um, a degree in photography, or um, there are some places that may hire you if you um, have taken courses in, in both forensics and photography and know what you're doing. But generally, you need... Uh, to have a, a good working knowledge. You also need to be able to develop film. Um, I know that most things are digital these days, but you still need to be able to develop and enhance uh, photographs. Trace evidence examiner. Okay, Trace evidence, uh, there's a wide spectrum of things. Basically, trace evidence is whatever is left behind uh, at a crime scene. We're going to talk about this a lot this year. This goes uh, for things such as hair, fibers, paint, um, soil, dirt, glass, um, even impressions like a like a foot impression, a footprint. Um, so wide variety of things that you're looking for uh, and the main thing is they're identifying uh, and using physical, chemical, and instrumental analysis to determine uh, what the evidence is because you might have a single fiber that you had to determine. Man, what did that come from? Did that possibly come from any, sus any suspects? Okay, latent print examiner. I'm sure, everybody look at the weird pictures for the prints there. Everybody see the puppy? All right, nice. Okay, processes and examines latent fingerprints. Latent fingerprints are what we normally think of when we think of a fingerprint, where there's just something that's left on the surface. There's also patent prints, but we'll talk about that another time. That's more impressions that falls under trace evidence. Um, the main thing that the latent print examiner does, if they're actually a CSI latent print examiner, is they are they lift them from the crime scene using different chemicals. Um, 900, uh, luminol, things like that, um, using different powder and chemicals, um, run them through analysis, and then ultimately those things are searched through a database, um, both civil and criminal, to determine who did the wonderful crime. Forensic serologist uh, and biologist. This is getting into like kind of the little gory stuff there. Um, basically, they're both very similar. Um, serology deals more with uh, blood and body fluids. Um, biology uh, actually, all these kind of overlap because as a serologist, you can also do DNA analysis. As a biologist, you do blood and body fluid and DNA analysis. Um, a lot of times, they are called in to um, to testify in court um, about particular DNA evidence. Okay, so you have to have some legitimacy in what you do, uh, but they process, compare, and identify biological evidence. Forensic toxicologist. Okay. Um, I love that that Forensic Society of Toxicologists actually does have the skull and crossbones on there. They deal with uh, examining body fluids and organs to determine if someone was drugged or poisoned, you know, whether on purpose or on accident. 
uh, and a lot of times tox toxicologists are called into a case, you know, to to submit um, evidence. A questioned document examiner, okay. Um, this is a person who's called in for all those forged notes that you uh, sent in of your parents. I'm going to have all of the uh, safety contracts checked by a question document examiner. Um, this can be everything from just forged documents. You talk about wills. You talk about checks. However, even uh, a forged a question document examiner might be brought in if there is, say, there's a murder that takes place. Um, and someone finds literal writing on a wall or something, or, or maybe a, a drawing or, or something along those lines, a question document examiner would come in to try to figure out who it was who did that actual drawing or did that actual writing. Uh, and so they kind of have a wide spectrum of things that they do. Firearm examiner, okay? Yeah, check out the creepy act. I love that turtle picture, okay? So hopefully y'all like the turtle picture. I, I, I shouldn't have even called any attention to it just to see if you notice it. Firearm examiner, uh, another thing that we're going to look at this year. Um, basically, a, a, ma a major portion of a firearm examiner is trying to match up uh, ammunition to the firearm that discharged it. Uh, there's every type of every type of gun puts off a specific marking, uh, very fingerprint-like, on the um, bullet that it discharges, and so you can kind of match a gun and its bullet oh, depending on if it's fired or not. And so they also do things like trajectory. Um, this is in uh, tool mark examination, hence the hatchet to the head. Uh, and generally, this field a lot of times is called ballistics, especially when we're dealing with with firearms itself. Uh, I totally just realized there is a um, typo on that slide. This is not a firearm entomologist. Thank you, duplicate slide. Um, this would be a forensic entomologist. A little bug there. This is, to me, one of the coolest jobs. Um, you study insects to estimate the time of death during a homicide, or if you just know us, not even necessarily during a homicide, maybe even just a natural death. And so they use insect life cycles, okay, the little lives of little critters, to determine how long something has been dead. So let's say you find a body and there are, uh, there's fly larvae. Okay, well, that body has most likely been dead about a day. Okay, but let's say you go and Sorry for the squimish here. You find beetles. Well, that means that at least a week has gone by. Now, let's say you find dead beetles. Okay, then you might need to determine how many weeks this has happened. Uh, you have got to be smart for this. You need a PhD in entomology. Normally, you don't work for law enforcement directly, but you have a job at a university and you're called in uh, for specific cases. Um, forensic computer science. This is the lovely nerdy stuff um, for all you Facebook hackers out there. Um, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail of this right now because there's a wide spectrum of it, but this is like things like identity theft. This would be um, even uh, searching, say you uh, you have arrested a killer and, and you're trying to determine if there's other, you know, if there's other uh, murders that have taken place. You might search someone's computer, look for missing files. So this is document recovery, so deleted files, you know, getting those back um, and things along those names, along that line. Forensic engineering, that is one creepy clown picture. Um, this is a lot of forensic engineering is after the fact. So trying to determine how an accident happened, um, car crashes, explosions, fires, um, or even just a freak accident. A forensic engineer goes through, and probably the closest thing to the legitimate scientific method, they go through and test out uh, to see how something may have taken place. Um, so forensic forensic engineering is probably one of the more specific sciences involved. Because there's actually some uh, there's actually some experiments that would take place in this. You, however, would need a degree in engineering and also a particular certification. Forensic odontology. All right, it's sorry. I just that picture creeps me out. Um, this is talking about teeth. Okay. Um, Identifies and compares dental evidence. This can be actual teeth that you find. It can be find, uh, your uh, you know dental work. We're talking about identifying bodies um, and even bite marks. Um, there, basically, your particular teeth pattern um, and I mean your dental work uh, to some is, is they say is actually um, more original to you than your DNA. Okay, that no one has a teeth pattern exactly like yours. Even if you have identical twins, there's because of the way they've chewed their food, or you know, or dentist work that they've had, 
um, there is a difference in their, you know, in the way that their teeth are aligned. Uh, and so you would need a doctor of dentistry degree, among other things, to be able to do this, and then you could help fix uh, Brittany there. Forensic pathology, okay? Pathology is actually the study of disease, and so this is the study of disease that kills, okay? So um, this is a branch of medicine used for legal purposes and for determining causes of death, okay? So uh, this a lot of time works in, con uh, in conjunction with the medical examiner. Uh, they do autopsies, and they basically try to determine why someone died. Um, and so you would, obviously, you need to be a doctor. It's not something where it's like, yeah, I put in my application at McDonald's, and I put in to be a forensic pathologist. Um, any picture that I tried to find was just too creepy, so I just said, forget it on that. Uh, and then finally here we have a criminologist, um, which someone would say maybe is a little bit outside of the forensic nature of uh, the forensic science nature, but, uh, but I, I, I'm going to include it. This is the study of why criminals commit crimes. This is more of psychology, okay? So you would need a degree in psych or, or sociology, or you would need a particular, um, uh, you would need a particular specialization. Uh, to be able to understand why a criminal does something, but it is very important when we talk about the law and the criminal, the actual like law side of forensic science. Uh, and so I don't really know why I threw in the guy with the mustache on the back just because it was weird. So with that said, you need to know all of these careers. You need to know um, the distinctions between them. I promise you that they will show up ultimately on a unit test. Um, and so with that said, have a lovely evening.